Good morning, Maya Pay are back. Here's the plan, catch up. Uh, yeah, apologies for missing a couple of days. I've had a little bit of an issue. Uh, daughter had to go into hospital uh, and she was kept in for a couple of nights. Uh, all good now, come out again uh, in good shape. But it meant that, yeah, a bit busy with hospital visits and probably my head wasn't quite in the right place to be filming buildings. Not sure it ever is, but uh, we normally give it a try. So today, catching up with what we've missed. What could possibly go wrong? Monday morning. Normally, I would start with a process that if you've been around for a while, you'll know what it is, and we'll go to that in just a moment. But I thought I'd just, on the way, pick up on the fact that Glenn is in, he's in virtually every day, cleaning uh, the pool. The pool did get quite a bit of use again yesterday, uh, which was Father's Day. Depending on when you're watching this, that might be obvious, it may not. But it was Father's Day, a little bit interrupted for us. Well, quite a lot interrupted for us, really, because we ended up uh, having to make uh, a couple of trips to the hospital. Uh, one of the kids was not well. Uh, hopefully all recovered this morning. Well, I'm about to find out. Uh, but anyway, Glenn's doing his thing, which he does, as I say, almost every day. Here we go. So yes, if you have been with us for any length of time, you know what's coming on a Monday morning. Elson takes charge. See what kind of energy we have today. And as always, the bosses are involved. And just here, Mr. Jesse Bamba is back. He led the prayer a few minutes ago. Now involved in the exercise process. Let's see who we can make smile this morning. Oh, sorry for that noise. This is Don Don, our new, one of our new pastures. Oh, is it risk of getting battered then? Got too close. There you go, Monday morning exercise. I hope you joined in, even if you were sitting down. Singing, Rico is singing. Morning, singing. Without his pink hat. Charles Hill has just put a comment in saying he has a cat named Rico, although the spelling I think is slightly different. There we go, we've got two Ricos here, and now we can add Charles's cat to our list of Ricos. We have discovered over the last couple of days that we're not quite fully set up with solar yet, at least not in the small house that this is powering. We had a brownout, and when we had a brownout, we lost power. Uh, and I did check with the supplier, it's because at the moment, they've not connected up the uh, transfer switch or the EPS uh, to handle brownouts while we're still only powering that small house as well, plus the pool pump. Once we switch this over to supplying the new house, that should be taken care of. But it was a bit frustrating 
to lose power when we knew there was still power in the batteries. But so be it. We can be a little patient. We'll start down here in the living room. Mud and tape. As far as I can tell, all done. I think this was done before, but just to catch up, mud and tape in the dining room. All done. I don't think this was done before. Mud and tape all the way down the uh, kind of corridor, coming from the front door over to uh, over my right shoulder, heading down towards the kitchen and all the other rooms. That's all done. The mud and tape has commenced in the main kitchen. Melvin's working on this one. Erwin is down there working on a bit of cleanup, a bit of sanding, where they've got the mud and tape going down towards the dirty kitchen. So, as you might expect, in two, two days or so, quite a lot has been finished off with mud and tape downstairs. Long way to go still, but a lot has been done. Baba Jess, with a wall that is simply sprouting wires, he's just checking connections here. Okay, going around the bedrooms. George's room, the topping for the bedroom, and I can't get in there, but I think the master closet, all done. In Jack's bathroom, we have tiling now, I think in almost all places, maybe all, fully up to the 2.7 metre height. At the moment, nothing down low. Oh, and Jack's balcony. They've filled in the gaps. Uh, there's a little bit over in that corner that I think will still need something doing, but looking at it, I'm assuming that will only happen after they put the uh, kind of glass wall around the outside. I can't get in there at the moment. Uh, Don Don's in there and he's using the space by the door. One thing that has been added is some of the trim. If we can make it out in that rather gloomy room, uh, we've added the tile trim around where the niche is, the little kind of cutout area that we've got in all the bathrooms where you stick your well, shampoos and whatever you use in your shower. But that's been added. Again, here, tiles up to height. The wooden guides that they had in are mostly gone now, and when those are all gone, they'll continue the tiling down to floor level. The engineers just whispered in my ear that before those last tiles go down towards the bottom, they will waterproof the floor first. On oh, Sabrina's balcony, we're starting to get the tiles going on the floor here. The builder is around and he's just said that they're actually a few tiles short. So they're going on to try and find the remainder to finish off, I think it's probably only here. In Alex's room, the topping got completed. And as in all the bedrooms now, they have put the kind of TV cabinet uh, up onto the wall. We have seen a, a rendering of how that might look. I think we're going to have to make a little bit of a change, um, but the, it's, it's just to the finish. The balcony for the master bedroom. Almost all the tiles are in. Again, a little bit around the outside edge, which I, as with the other room, I assume will be done only after they put the wall in. Or maybe the wall fits right up to the edge of the tiles and there's no need. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see how they end up finishing this. Inside the bedroom itself, the topping is continuing through that little corridor that leads away from us up towards the walk-in closet and bathroom. So, Donald is down here, getting this topping in place. It's a little after lunch. We'll start here in one of the bathrooms. This one is Jack's bathroom. Where I've managed to get inside so we can get a little closer to see the tile edging. Uh, I just asked the engineer because there was a question about waterproofing uh, and the question was, are the walls waterproofed before the tiles go on? Well, the answer is yes and no. It is yes, 
down to the low level. So what's that? That's going to be half a foot, maybe a little bit more uh, above the floor. That is waterproof. Beyond that, it's not. Now, there's also been a number of questions, and David Craycraft is one, uh, and as a tiler, he was questioning the thickness of the adhesive mix that is used. And there's no good answer, David. Uh, the answer I've got is that the roughly, uh, is it 0.8 of a centimeter uh, of thickness, that's what they consider standard. Uh, I, I can't give you a better answer than that, unfortunately. It's what they're used to, it's what they do, right or wrong. Uh, you're the expert, David, I, I'm absolutely, as we know, not. That's the only answer I can get, I'm afraid. On Jack's balcony, something new. Oliver's putting some forms in place around the outside edge of the balcony in preparation for the wall that we've got in here. So at the moment, he's just added some rebar going horizontally across the rebar that was embedded in the floor already. We'll have to just see what happens next with this because I have no idea what the process will be. And still in Jack's room. Sorry about the music. The radio's on very loud, but I don't want to ask him to switch it off. Topping is getting a lot of comments again about the thickness of this topping. And again, I've got an answer. It's not all that logical to me. I haven't really thought this through yet. But basically, because of the position of doors and windows, they have to get tiling the top of the floor tiles up to a height of five centimeters. To do that, given that you're going to have the tile and adhesive on the floor, which will come to one and a half centimeters, they are adding three and a half centimeters of topping. Now, what I can't quite get my head around is why we couldn't simply set the doors and windows two or three centimeters lower. I haven't thought that one through either yet. I'll try and get my head around it at some point. But that's the answer I've got. Switching over to, to Brina's room. A little bit more of the tiling is done. I don't know when they're expecting delivery of the final tiles they need. I didn't see anything else come in this morning, although it's possible that I missed it. But getting close to finishing the tiling here, at least including the outside edges. Right, very noisy and a lot of dust being generated. But here we're getting the fix on the floor of Sabrina's bathroom. Again, the problem we had here was that after this slab was poured, we made the change that removed the walk-in closet that was going to be over here. So they poured the slab while they're still assuming that the bathroom was going to be narrower than it ended up being. Not a mistake on their part, that was something that we caused the problem later by requesting a change. But right now, grinding out the rest of that floor and it is very, very dusty. Manny's just checking progress on the topping for the master bedroom. Nearly done. They're right over. Almost to the corner, uh, the rest of the room is finished. Well, a bit of smoothing going on as well, but very nearly finished. In the main kitchen, Melvin's still working on mud and tape in here. Uh, still uh, little bits not quite done, take a dizzy pill. Over towards what will be the double doors over there, not quite finished. And maybe other areas still need a bit more work. In fact, this, this lower section of the ceiling, you can probably still maybe make out uh, that the tape, the structure of that tape is still quite visible. So that needs more skin coat on top, at least over here. Whereas over here, looks like it has had a second coat. So that tape is disappearing 
into the mud. And Owen, Owen, not Owen, is continuing the same process here in the corridor between the stairs on the left, our front door and stairs and living room, going round towards the kitchen on the right and the other rooms heading off down there. Down here at the front of the house, I'm just looking out of the corner window, well, the window in the living room. Papa Jess is just running more data cables from the house and they'll be heading over to the storage room. Uh, well, in the carports where we're gonna have cameras over there. So we have now ordered most of the security cameras. There's one type of security camera that I can't get my hands on just yet. There's no stock. They're all from the same company. Um, and I will be covering those quite a bit once they all arrive. So we'll see if he can get, I doubt if he'll get all of this trenching and pipe laying finished today. There's a long way to go. The bell has gone. 4.30, end of the working day. And we'll start here on Jack's balcony, just because this was something new today. Oliver has effectively poured a beam all the way around the outside edge. So that is the base into which the glass balcony wall will be put. Embedded, sunk, I don't know what the right word is. But well, that's something new for the day. On Sabrina's balcony. It looks like the builder did manage to source those remaining tiles that were required. It's done. I'm not sure if it's done around all the outside edges. I think it is. If they're gonna pour a similar beam around the outside edge, which I'm sure they will. Uh, there's no grout in these uh, tiles yet, but the tiles themselves are all in place. Inside Sabrina's bathroom, all of the tiles are in place except for those low down ones. The edging is in place. No grout yet. Nothing new today in George's room, whether it's the bedroom or the walk-in closet or the balcony. The screed in the master bedroom, all done. So I can't go over and check what the status is of the balcony tiles. It's still rather wet in there. In the kitchen, Melvin continued with mud and tape. And a lot of that tape that earlier on was still clearly visible, no longer is. I don't know whether he's finished in here, uh, but he's got close, that's for sure. And here in the corridor, the L-shaped corridor, Herwin with an H, like herbs. It's not herbs. Most American pronunciation I think makes a lot of sense. Where did you get herbs from? Come on, it's got an H and it's not silent. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, looks like Herwin got most of the mud and tape done in the ceiling here. So now I think all the way down there is done. So the end of day 239 after that little two day gap. Once again, apologies for that, but if your head's not in the game, shouldn't be in the game. And mine wasn't. Uh, so not a lot of new stuff to show you despite that little gap, but quite a bit more finishing has been done. And now we're starting to see a little bit more of the development on balconies as well. So tomorrow, I don't know if there's anything new coming. Come back and find out. See you then.